If you ask me at any time whether I think that a work of fiction belongs to its creator or its fan base, 10 times out of 10, I would be inclined to say its creator. I believe that fans are entitled to give their opinions, their fan theories, their thoughts and feelings on an IP or on a work of art, whatever form that work of art takes, but at the end of the day, it is the property, it is the belonging of the creator. Maybe I'm biased because I myself am a writer and I would hate to think that people who have not been involved in the creative process have any sort of ownership over what I created alone in my room with my own thoughts. However, I think the more I analyze a lot of circumstances surrounding fictional characters and fictional worlds, I think that there is an argument to be made about the ownership or at least influence that a fan base can have on a fictional piece of work. And sometimes fans can do something that a creator could not give their characters a second chance at life. Connor Kenway is a character that was basically universally disliked when he first came out. And this is not going to be a video where I'm going to say that I believe he's underrated or that he's an amazing character because frankly, and I know this is going to probably be in disagreement with a lot of my viewers who have been commenting that they love Connor Kenway. I don't actually like his character. No matter how much time passes, I'm not a fan of Connor Kenway. And if I had to rank him in terms of characters, I would put him towards the bottom. Of course, he's got a, a bunch of redeeming values, but this video is not a video made made in defense of Connor Kenway, but rather in appreciation of how much love and respect so much of the fan base has for him to the point where even people like me who don't like him have no choice but to respect him. He's the only character in my opinion that has managed to resurrect from the dead and gain respect even among his biggest critics thanks to the pure loyalty that so many fans have shown towards him since his inception. Now, that's not to say that a lot of other hated or disliked characters within the AC universe don't have their defenders and don't have their redeeming qualities. You can pretty much bunch most Assassin's Creed characters into one of three categories. The universally beloved, which are the Ezio de Torres, the Edward Kenways, and the Bayeks of Siwa. You have the forgettable characters like Shea Patrick Cormac or Aveline de Grand Pre, and if you don't know who that is, you're literally proving my point. And then you have the almost universally disliked characters like Evie and Jacob Fry, like Cassandra and Eivor, and like Connor. And all these dislike characters have their defenders, have their fans, have people who are so obsessed with them and they rank them right at the top of their character lists. However, most of these other dislike characters, even though they do have their fans, kind of get disregarded by the wider community. If you start defending Jacob and Evie Fry, there are very few people who are going to listen to you or respect your opinion. Whether that's right or wrong is not for me to say. Obviously, everyone's entitled to their opinion and one can judge the quality of writing and the quality of character development, but at the end of the day, if you like a character, you like a character. However, what I've seen with Connor Kenway is that even his biggest critics have sat down and said maybe we judged him too harshly and even if he's not for me, I completely understand why you like him. And this is something that makes me appreciate fan bases so much more and makes me appreciate the AC fan base so much more because there's been a non-stop and tireless march in defense of Connor Kenway since 2012 that have revived his character and put him in the pedestal that many people believe that he deserves to be in. So let's take a look back at why people hated Connor Kenway in the first place, whether he's as bad as people used to say he is and whether he's as good as people say he is now. In my mind, Connor Kenway was a character that was given an impossible task, a character that was born born into tragedy, someone who was set up to fail. How on earth could you ever follow up Ezio Auditore? To me, it's an impossible task. This is a character that became one of the most popular fictional characters in gaming, not just within Assassin's Creed. He became a fan favorite that people could invest themselves into over the span of three games and three years. He was loved for his charisma, his charm, his wit, his wisdom, his bravery, his love for other people. And the end of his story was so well written and so beautifully wrapped up that it generated so much excitement for what came next. Excitement that no matter what you gave people, they were not going to like. If you try to make a character that was charismatic as well and witty, and Ezio look alike, he would always be compared to Ezio and never be good enough because he was Ezio-like. He wouldn't be able to have an identity of his own. So what do you do? Well, the writers naturally decided to go the other way. They went for a more solemn character, someone more reminiscent of Altair, someone focused and serious, someone who took the gravity of their situation with the respect that it deserved. They were in a horrible time in history, treated poorly by allies and enemies alike. In my opinion, this is the best shot that they could have given a character, to not try and be like Ezio, but try and make a name for himself. But sadly, because of the somewhat rushed narrative development because of the flawed voice acting and because of some weird creative choices, Connor fell flat for a lot of people when they first played him. Maybe it's because we spent too much time as Hatham, or maybe it's because the voice acting wasn't there, or maybe it's just because he wasn't given enough time to shine. I don't know what the answer is, I just know that when I played Connor, I wasn't as invigorated as I was with Ezio or with Altair. But the main problem is that everyone was always going to compare him to Ezio, and he was always going to lose. You cannot win against a legend. You cannot win against the idea of perfection. People place Ezio as one of the 
best fictional characters of all time. Nothing you can do in the first game following that could ever come close to being good enough in the eyes of the most fervent fans. However, over time, people became more and more kind to Connor, and I want to try and understand why. And there's two main theories that I have as to why it is, and with most things in life, it's probably a mixture of both rather than one or the other. The first theory that I have is that Connor isn't that badly written. In fact, he has a lot of the more wise and interesting revelations out of the entire franchise. He's one of the assassins that calls out the hypocrisies of the Templars, but of the assassins as well, of his own allies and the fact that they were carrying on so many evil deeds of the Templars were blamed with doing all alone. Connor is a character that kind of grounds Assassin's Creed 3 as the more realistic game than it is. The Ezio trilogy is more of like a Hollywood version of the Assassin's Creed and AC3 makes it much more realistic and much more solemn to match the time period that he's in. So even though Connor might be kind of like a Debbie Downer, he's kind of right most of the time and he calls out people's bullshit more often than maybe even the most dedicated fans would like. I also think that the ending speech that was cut out that a lot of fans discovered later on gave his character a lot of completion that a lot of people wanted and were craving for. And if you haven't heard it, try and type in Reddit or Google Connor Assassin's Creed 3 ending speech. It's a very beautiful speech that reminds me a lot of Arno's ending speech in Assassin's Creed Unity. And I think that it'll give a lot of context to the character of Connor and how he realized that the fight that he has in Assassin's Creed 3 and the tragedies he suffers are just the beginning and don't mean as much as he thought he did when he was younger. This is one of the tragic endings that I like in Assassin's Creed 3. It's one of the tragic realizations that I love in my characters and that I love in Connor too. And this is one of his biggest redeeming qualities. And this is one of the reasons why I think that his character was judged too harshly. Because even though he does have flaws and I still don't think Connor is a fantastic character, he's one that, that's much more wise than people give him credit for. He's one that was stacked up against impossible odds of following up Ezio Auditore. And he's one that embodies the creed and the philosophy so beautifully, probably as well as Altair did at the same age as him. And I completely understand and respect why so many people love him. What I love even more than that is how people never gave up on him. For the first three, four years after Assassin's Creed 3 came out, you were basically an outcast if you liked Connor Kenway. Obviously, you know, hopefully most people respect other people's opinions, but online, that doesn't normally seem to be the case. And if you liked Connor Kenway, you were seen as kind of an outcast, someone who didn't know what a good game was or a good character was. And yet, for years on end, people who liked Connor Kenway kept liking and defending him publicly, kept commenting on YouTube videos and Reddit threads how great he was and how misunderstood he was. And that's something that makes me really appreciate a fan base when they're not toxic about the defense of a character, they're not authoritative about the defense of a character, but simply just show up and say, hey, I know a lot of people don't like him, but I really like this guy because of X, Y, and Z. And the reason why I think that people have slowly given in to this way of thinking and respected that people like Connor Kenway is, is because of my second theory, which is that if you compare Connor to Ezio and Altair, who are two of my favorite characters of all time, yeah, he's not going to look that great. But then you kind of see the shit that came afterwards with Evie and Jacob Fry, for example, and you realize that everything in life is relative. And Connor Kenway placed in the greater context of the other Assassin's Creed characters is actually not that bad and we got a lot of perspective the more games came into the series. Now, whether this is good or bad, I cannot say, and it's not for me to say, but I do think there is an element of comparison that is inevitable with Assassin's Creed, and this is why so many Assassin's Creeds end up being hated at first and then loved later on, because time gives perspective, and when you view it as part of a larger IP, something that you initially hated or compared to the ideal standard, you may then realize it's actually not that bad, and that if you open your mind a little bit, there can be lots of different types of good AC characters. There can be lots of different types of good AC characters, games and you just need to have the perspective and the patience to understand where all these games fit within the IP and this is I think exactly what happened to Connor. So I just wanted to make this video not to kind of make a video like so many others saying Connor is underrated, Connor is great, Connor is whatever. I think he's an iconic character and I like a lot about him but overall I don't think he's that amazing. What I do think is amazing is the Assassin's Creed fan base. What I do think is amazing is the patience, the love, the loyalty that people have had for this character and the testament that even though my belief is that IP belongs to the creator, that fiction belongs to the mind who made it, there is something to be said for a fan base giving life to a character that had died in your arms, and I really respect people who fight for Connor Kenway. Maybe in a few years I'll be making a video about E.B. Fry and Jacob Fry, or maybe even Cassandra if enough time passes and enough arguments are made, but for now I think Connor Kenway is the only person out of that category of universally hated characters, or generally hated characters, that has made it back from the dead, and I think that's a beautiful testament to the passion and influence of a fan base. And I mentioned before that one of the things I like about Connor Kenway is his tragic story. I actually made a video discussing the tragedy of the Assassin's Creed, which you can watch now.